Thanks for joining me again. Today I'm going to actually make something on the Tormach 770 CNC mill. I haven't actually made a part yet. What you've seen is that little octopus that I kind of engraved into the surface of some aluminum. That's all I've done. That's literally the last thing I did on this machine. So now I gotta try to figure out how to actually make a part, you know, to my dimensions. So that's what we're gonna do now. In this video, it's mainly just gonna be the design, and then in following videos, we'll do some machining. Last time I was at the shop, I picked up this chunk of bronze or brass. I'm not really sure what it is. I had seen this style of phone stand on Etsy where it's just two pieces that slot together. And I thought it seemed like a simple enough kind of beginner project. It's something I would like have my kids do to learn how to use the laser or something. So I figured it would be a good start for machining. I could just machine some holes and a couple of plates of metal. And so I measured out my stock and got to work designing Infusion 360. I started with the uh, bronze plate and I figured it could extend kind of back behind the, st the stand and have a little bowl in it for me to hold, you know, loose change or whatever was in my pockets and it would be kind of out of sight. You'll see what I mean once I get the design. So I, uh, I made a a square roughly the size of what my stock was and then I dimensioned out a pocket I had measured my aluminum piece and it's six millimeters thick um, yeah, I'm still designing in millimeters and it's frustrating because machining switches back and forth between millimeters and inches a lot so it hurts my brain uh, but I'm still gonna keep designing in millimeters for now I think anyway um, so my aluminum is six millimeters, and I'm really just winging this. So I make this the thickness of my bronze. This is kind of the back half. There's still that section there in the front. And for some reason, I thought it would be cool to have that front part a little thinner so it wasn't this massive block sticking out the front. In retrospect, that just was added complexity I didn't need um, on the machining. Oh well. Uh, so I then added this kind of pocket into it by, you know, subtracting about half of the stock width. And then I wanted this to be rounded out um, mostly just so that I could learn how to make that rounded contour on the machine, like how to properly machine those, those curved surfaces. So I added that chamfer or that, uh, that, yeah, that chamfer in there or bevel or whatever that would be. And then I went around and I rounded off the corners. And then I started thinking that if I slid this into the aluminum plate, that there would be nowhere for the foam cord to go. So I added a hole initially, the size of the, little charger and then I thought okay if I get this exactly the size of the charger then it may not fit it may not line up correctly it may not be at the right angle so I needed to add some slop you can see here I'm kind of thinking about it and rounding the corners around and, and messing with it then I decided to just go much bigger a little bit of a little bit of slop in here I, I felt like it would just make the whole project easier I'm not going for a super fine machinery here. I just wanted it to work. So I kind of placed it more or less center. It's a much bigger hole now. And this is going to allow for the charger cable to just plug right into the bottom of the phone and hopefully not be in the way. And I noticed when I had made it, I didn't line it perfectly up with the side of the drawing there. So there was a little sliver left over. So I had to go back in and scoot it over and then it was gone. I rounded these corners off too, just with a quick one millimeter push pull. And then I thought it, I would change the material properties and actually render this later so that I could visualize it in Fusion. So it's time to design the aluminum bit on the front. That brushed aluminum was just so pretty. I thought it would be cool to use it and just make a block. I mean, I could engrave something in it um, but I just 
just thought it was pretty as is and would be cool with a block of bronze sticking out of it or brass or whatever this is. So I made a, a shape roughly the size of my stock and started subtracting down from that. And this is going to be um, this is going to be an easier piece because it's just pretty much just the profile that I'm cutting out. So I dimensioned out a rectangle to be the same height as that piece. And there we go, there's the basics of it. I decided to add, you know, slightly rounded corners and a few little additions just to make it a little nicer. It took me a minute to figure out how to get a material on there because I guess the material wasn't downloaded to my machine. So I had to keep trying until I realized I had to download the material first. And then it plopped right on. No problem. And I could adjust the way the brushing was going to make it look more like my stock material. I'm very visual, uh, so being able to actually look at it like this helps me a lot to know if this is going to be ridiculous looking or, or neat or what. So I decided I wanted to kind of round off those top edges there, you know, just so you wouldn't like scrape your arm across it or, or whatever. And then I realized I had made some of the dimensions incorrectly. So I started adjusting things a little bit. And I believe I added just a little bit of slop to that. Anywhere those those faces were gonna meet, I added, I think, just a, a fraction of a millimeter. I don't even remember how much. So that they wouldn't clamp together too tightly. I wanted it to be able to slide in there. So I made copies of these so that I could actually tip it around and look at it in the renderer without screwing with the originals. Uh, it was just easier than figuring out if that was going to mess up anything in cam. So I made a copy and brought it into the renderer and just went through a couple quick iterations of uh, lighting and environment to see kind of what it was going to look like. And it got me excited. It got me excited that I was going to be able to go out and, and hopefully machine this and bring it into reality. So the design's done. Now all I have to do is figure out the cam and put it in the machine and make it real. So join me in the next video while I figure that out.